I just hit a curb. I don't know how. Keep a little cute, classy. How to find ways of mental, emotional, and physical health. That curb came out of nowhere. Find O A in the dashboard. If you are new here, my name is Tempest. I normally do not look like this. We're going to get this all together. But if you are new here, my name is Tempest, a.k.a. Dose of Tempest. Um, if you are returning, hey girl, hey. Okay, so today is Saturday, July 20th, and I am about to get dressed and go to an actual fibroids event. As you, you guys know, um, I have been affected by fibroids. It kind of like just altered my uh, way of living, uh, especially when it comes to like my female health. You guys always hear me talk about fibroids in a sense. So um, if you are not aware, this month, the month of July is Fibroid Awareness Month. So pretty cool. Um, I have not been doing the best job at just sharing fibroids this month with everything else that's been going on. I mean, I can make all the excuses, but stuff been just happening. Anyway, um, I am about to get dressed, so let me get out of this bunny. Name another nigga hat, I'm just sunnies. Go bottles on bottles, I'm just sunnies. Hundred thousand on watches, I'm just sunnies. Coops all on coops, I'm just sunnies. Keep a gang of bad bitches with me too And we ain't never going back to what we used to do I was gonna lie to you, but I had to tell the truth I'm just being honest My piss coming back dirty, I'm just being Okay, y'all, so it is Um It's 1026 right now According to this message I got It is the event is from 10 to 2. Okay, so I was a little skeptical about this event in a sense because I just got a random message. It's like one of those, I don't know, automated marketing messages or whatnot. And it just gave all the information. So, I was, of course, I was trying to figure out who it, who it was. Um, but, you know, I couldn't because, again, it's marketing information. But, um... According to the, according to the message, let me just, this is, hope y'all can see it. This is a flyer, AKA text message that I received about the event. So it is in Houston today, um, July 20th from 10 to 2. It looked like it's hosted by Merit Medical BGLI which that is the Barbara Jordan Leadership Institute and then also by the Fibroid Institute of Texas. So like I had mentioned, or if you guys don't know, July is Fibroid Awareness Month. <clears throat> so perfect timing for this event. Uh, so in the text message, it basically says, join us for the Barbara Jordan Leadership Institute self-care forum where we deep dive into the impacts of fibroids on our health and wealth. And wealth. In partnership with the Fibroid Institute Texas, we're proud to lead the Texas Fibroid Awareness Campaign, um, addressing a critical health issue affecting many women, especially within black communities. We're hosting a panel and roundtable to create safe spaces for women affected by uterine fibroids to share their experiences and find community support. Our discussions will cover the physical, mental, emotional, and financial aspect of living with fibroids, including preparing for procedures and financial planning. Uh, they give all the information. And then they also say that we ask attendees to bring a period product to donate to a Title I high school, pantry, or shelter. Your contribution will help support those in need. We will also be hosting a water distribution giving 
our attendees a case of water. Together, we amplify our voices, advocate for better health outcomes, and empower our communities. So I'm just about to do my hair, do a makeup, no makeup type look. Really, it's just kind of like, I want to just kind of even out my skin. It's an acne mark, acne mark. It don't really matter because half the time I go outside with no makeup on, but like I said, I try to be presentable in a sense. When I go to different places, so we'll see. We'll see what it's about. Of course, if I'm not feeling it, I'm a dip. But I really want to connect with an organization who wants to drive the change in the conversation about fibroids that that affect Black African American women, um, just women in general, but you know, especially uh, African American women. So let me finish getting dressed. Like I said, the event started at 10. It's 10. It's 10.30 now. So hopefully I'll walk out the house by 11 o'clock. Okay, so I think this is what we came up with as far as what I'm going to wear. This is a bodysuit and some slacks pants. I have some rings, one bracelet, some earrings, and a necklace. Try to keep it all cute and dainty. And then I'm going to wear my just some regular slides overnight kind of like pearl in a sense keep it keep a little cute classy you know name another nigga hot i'm just sunny go balls on bottles i'm just sunny hundred thousand on watches i'm just sunny coops all on coops i'm just sunny i keep a gang of bad bitches with me too and we ain't never going back to what we used to do. I was gonna lie to you. Y'all, okay, I made it. I just hit a curb. I don't know how. Well, I know how. I don't know where to park at. And I was too busy looking up and trying to read the sign. I wasn't paying attention. Hopefully in my little tire. Oh no. Now I'm getting a notification about my tire pressure. Dang it! extremely common as mentioned in the last panel. Uh, it's estimated that 70 to 80 percent of all women will have fibroids and they can cause debilitating symptoms. I like to break out the types of symptoms they can cause into two different categories. There's the bleeding symptoms, very self-explanatory, heavy cycles, prolonged cycles leading to anemia. In cases, some cases severe anemia, leading to blood transfusions or iron infusions. Um, and then the other types of symptoms that fibroids typically cause are what we refer to collectively as bulk symptoms. Bulk symptoms have to do with the size of the weight or the density of the fibroids. So as the fibroids grow, and the natural history of most fibroids is that they do grow slowly over time, sometimes more quickly. Uh, and as they grow, they enlarge the uterus. And when the uterus gets big, it starts pushing on all the other structures around it in the pelvis, much like when a woman's pregnant, it can cause things like pelvic pressure, pelvic pain, back pain, constipation. Um, urinary frequency, urinary urgency. Um, and so these are the two general types. They can also cause significant uh, fertility issues in patients trying to conceive. Um, so fortunately not, the majority of women, fortunately the majority of women with fibroids never know that they have them. That's the good news. Only about 25% of women with fibroids will ever become symptomatic. And as I tell patients all the time, if they're not bothering a patient, we don't bother them. How did fibroids affect your life? Tell you one Um, So for me, it's been a long journey, like I said. Um, we are in the process of trying to conceive. And so I'm in my 40s now. 
And along the way, I didn't think the fibroids were affecting me because every time I went and had an ultrasound, they were only show three. Fibroids have disproportionate impact on women of color. Many things, there can be stressors. Um, we are predispositioned genetically. Um, so you definitely have to look at environment and you have to look at lifestyle and you have to look at eating patterns. We metabolize estrogen different. Silent endocrine disruptors. Not much to add to what they said. I mean, the truth is nobody knows all the reasons. Um, you know, we know that if you have a first degree relative, mother, sister that has them, you're more likely to have them. Uh, we also know that they are very dependent or reactive to hormones. Um, ladies, when you go to the doctor and you find out you're anemic, please don't let a doctor tell you this is normal for women. Just because we bleed monthly, you have to keep up with that. You have to find out, is this really normal? To be normal a little bit once in a while, but if you check again in three months and you're still anemic, I think it's something that, you know, just yeah, dig into it. And right. no matter what everybody tells you, just dig into it and try to find a root. I think that here in the U.S., we try to slap on medicine sometimes without really finding the root of the, the cause. What are some treatments options for fibroids besides hysterectomy? Wow, that's also a very loaded question. <laughs> I'm gonna speak from the traditional medicine side. I'll let them speak from the more organic or holistic side because that's something that I don't know much about. Uh, and most physicians do, as I'm sure you guys do. Um, so I tell patients all the time that I think one of the most important things in terms of knowledge is knowing what your options are if you do in fact need to be treated. Because it's not a one size fits all. Um, and I find too many patients that are only offered hysterectomy, open surgery, which hysterectomy is still the best option for some patients, but fortunately for patients, there's a lot of other options available today. And a lot of them are a lot less invasive with a lot less recovery time. I mean, uh, traditional hysterectomy is four to six weeks of complete recovery. Uh, who has four to six weeks to take off of your life? You know, uh, and then some people, even if work is not a problem, it's caring for children, it's caring for parents. I mean, there's a lot of social reasons why patients can't do that as well. So fortunately today, there are a lot of other options, but there are minimally invasive surgical options. There are robotic surgery, laparoscopic surgery, hysteroscopic surgery which are all less invasive ways to either remove the uterus or remove fibroids from the uterus through less invasive means. So smaller incisions, therefore shorter recovery times. About half of the traditional recovery time is open surgery. So rather than four to six weeks, like two to three weeks. Um, there are some thermal ablation technologies out there that exist where they can heat and kill fibroids with heat. Um, Assessa, Sonata, usually used in conjunction with one of the less invasive surgical options. Uh, there are better drugs and medications than we've ever had with more coming out all the time that can be very effective in controlling symptoms related to fibroids. The trouble with most drugs and medications, both hormonal and non-hormonal, is that their effects tend to be temporary. So they work pretty well for most patients when they're on them, but as soon as you come off, the symptoms generally come right back. And then many of the medications, especially the hormones, there are limitations to the amount of time a patient can take them, and there are also uh, limit, uh, significant side effects for some patients as well. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, still the traditional surgical options. And then my practice is dedicated to treatment with fiber organization, which is uh, basically a catheter-based, minimally invasive treatment option. Uh, it's done much like a heart cath type procedure through a tiny puncture hole of an artery. What we do basically is we cut off the blood supply to the fibroids and cause the fibroids to shrink and die. 60% of whatever you put on your skin goes into your bloodstream. Um, I healed mine um, with an uh, African herb called bitter cola, which what bitter cola does is it circulates the blood flow and it's a pain reliever, reliever. it's really awesome, it's a miracle. Um, it will kill every parasite, every uh, bacteria, and every fungus in your body. So along with that, moringa, making sure my body, because your body automatically wants to heal itself. Yeah. So moringa has every nutrient that you need for homostasis, so in order to live. You know. So I'm going to do a combination of the last two questions that we had, um, which is how can we destigmatize the discussion of fibroids and how can we raise awareness? I mean, it's all about, in my opinion, like I said, education, knowledge, outreach, uh, reaching out to the community. Thank you so much.
Hey girlies, so I was telling you guys I was going to this event. I found out who invited me, so I want to introduce you guys to Ty Jones. Hi everyone, I'm Ty Jones. I am the founder of Her Womb Wellness, where we share um, resources with women dealing with fibroids, and we also create a community. And you can find me at herwombwellness.org, and you can find me on Instagram at herwombwellness. So if you have fibroids or you're post-surgery um, from fibroids, this is definitely a community that you want to get involved with so you can learn how to prevent or if you want to learn how to manage. We have holistic doctors and we have so many different resources available to you. Y'all, I'm going to make sure I put the Instagram information as well as her website in the description box so you guys can connect. Okay, y'all, we finished the event, but remember I was telling y'all, I think I did hit the curb. Yeah, we're in flat, so now we're waiting on somebody. Hey, y'all, so I'm waiting on a wrecker i guess that's what some people call roadside assistance i'm waiting on roadside assistance to come um yeah stupid mistakes i don't know i've been driving since i was 15 16 this is crazy this is the first time this actually happened to me however nevertheless um said that the the tow truck company is going to be here in like 20 minutes that was like about about mm, about 30 minutes ago so hopefully they are really on the way um i'm not rushing i'm grateful for some help but hey you know you can come anywho um after this i don't know what i'm gonna do but i know i gotta get another tire because i think i only got a dummy in the in the trunk anyway y'all i know how to fix the tire Believe it or not, girls know how to fix tires. Okay. Um, I know how to fix a tire, but I just feel too cute to be trying to do all that. Mm -mm. I mean, I could do it and then go get a real tire, shower, and then go get back outside and do whatever I need to do. But I know you kind of don't want to. So, actually, I do need to go to Ulta. I bought this online from Ulta almost a month ago. And I think Ulta's return policy is like 30 days or something. So I am I was trying to go today, but I'm not going to be able to ride around with that dummy on. So either one, I go to a tire shop directly after this. Oh, that's what I actually can look up. I can look up a tire shop. Um, believe it or not, last time I went to Walmart because... I got time to be paying all this money for these tires and stuff like this happen and y'all don't reimburse me y'all do nothing um yeah but anywho um I could just go straight to Walmart after this to get a replacement tire and then I need, I need to go I want to go to Alton make some other errands but your girl really want to go sit at a bar although I'm supposed to be doing better in life I want to go sit at the bar. I'll even get a martini. I'll get it. Oh, my hair is like puffed up really. That's cute. It's still in the ponytail. Anyway, yeah, y'all. So, that's what it is. We're just waiting. So, um, I guess I'll check back in with y'all in a little bit. Hopefully, they come soon. <laughs> Okay, triple A is here. I think it's been like another 10 minutes since the last time I talked to y'all. So, triple A is here. Let's see what they say. I probably have to move my car, but hopefully all is well. So, so sadly, I'm standing here. That curb came out of nowhere. They just jump up. I don't know. Well, Saturday vibes. Using lover and her babies Made me wanna ask you later for a ticket out of town So can I get a window seat? Oh, so, okay, the dummy is on now But y'all, why the dummy need air? So, he's about to put air in the dummy tire now And I'm just gonna go straight to Walmart because Whew and this camera battery is actually about to die too so i think i got my backup battery but yeah so 
Happy Saturday! Hey, quick update. So I went to the closest Walmart. Drive up. I went to the closest Walmart and that was not available. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I went to the closest Walmart that was like um, near downtown, AKA third ward area. So the closest Walmart is like uh, South Wayside. Y'all, hot as mess. Nobody wanted to work. And then when I finally got somebody to work, oops, so much noise. When I finally got somebody to work or whatever, don't we mess up my car now. When I finally got somebody to work, girl, she ain't no nerve from nothing. Anyway, the system said they didn't have a tire um, in my size, so I had to go to a different location. It, anyway, long story short, it was a hot ass, poor customer service experience. Anyway, so I just Googled to see what other tire shops are around. So I'm just putting a used tire on for now, and then I'll deal with getting a new tire later on. I just don't feel safe driving the dummy and I can't and I can't drive like I want to I'm not one of these um, grandma drivers like I got I got places to go you know what I'm saying and people just drive so crazy I want to be able to like maneuver and manage my car as much as possible just to get out of people way so anyway so after the Walmart um, they didn't have it like I said poor customer service experience I googled and I found two tire shops that were like 0 0.4 miles away I went to the first one uh, when I drove up nobody came out I don't know if anybody's working I was like hi no one said hi back then they were helping somebody else but kind of not I don't I don't know y'all and now okay of course I'm a little irritated but I'm hungry I did not eat a full breakfast and I definitely did not eat lunch because I've been outside well not outside but you know I've been out or whatever and now it's 344 so anyway I went to the second tire shop that I originally found in the Google and I'm here now so it's like a used tire shop none fancy no disrespect because they actually helping me but the guys like Oh, it'll be sixty dollars for the tire. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, because I I definitely have to buy like an actual tire. So what's gonna happen? The tire they're putting on right now, which is the used tire, I did say I was gonna buy two tires. So the used tire is gonna be my new dummy, and then I'm gonna Walmart and get a new tire to put on there. Um, my car do need to get serviced, so when I go get an oil change and all that, I just have to rotate and balance my tires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, y'all. I'm hungry and it is hot outside bad combo but the tires are getting fixed learn your lessons from me pay attention when y'all drive stay away from the curbs and just for anybody to know this is my first time it uh, first time me hitting a curb like that uh, since I own a car drove anything so crazy however i think something else is in the street but whatever anyway y'all i think that is the end of today i really hope that y'all got something from the fibroid event and or just received some confirmation of things that i have told you guys before about fibroids if you are interested um know anybody who has been affected by fibroids or yourself you have please make sure that you reach out to or look into any of those resources that was mentioned and I'll make sure that I put all of their information in the description box so you guys can go um, you know go check them out at your own leisure I'm gonna leave y'all here now thank you for watching another vlog I'll see you guys in the next one y'all be safe peace